but there could be more Apple Ones than that in the world. Mm-hmm. I was recently at, a, at a, an event in San Jose, California, at their History Museum of San Jose. They have one, and Wendell Sander brought one, Apple Engineers and Wendell Sander. I brought mine. My friend Alan Bound brought his, and somebody else showed up with one. We had like, I forget, five in one place in wow. one room. Jesus, but none of us, not mm-hmm. one of us would sell it. Oh, sure. Not, no. So how many did you hand build? Because you'd mentioned that you okay. shipped them off to... I, I, I obviously, I hand built the prototype, but the way I did was I plugged chips in. I don't believe I used sockets on my prototypes. I'd have to go back. Yeah, I did use them. But I plugged the chips into little blank breadboarding boards of Hewlett Packard. And then I, I do this at night. And then I would take wire wrap wire and solder from pin. I, I'd look at my, my design on paper. And I'd solder one wire from pin five of this IC to pin six of that IC, and I'd put a run a red line on my paper so I'd know on my design, so I would know which wires I had wired. And I'd wire the next wire, solder here, solder there, solder here, solder there. The wires were cut to be exactly the right length, so you wouldn't have a ton of wires bunching up in the air and getting in the way. Like another, the form that was more popular for prototypes was called wire wrapping. But I believed in doing the point-to-point soldering. And of course, I would have to hold the solder, the wire with my left hand, and the soldering iron with my right hand, and I'd hold the solder in my mouth <laughs> and, and then move it down and put, that's how I soldered. I was a good technician, <laughs> great technician as well as engineer. So I uh, just, you do everything, you know, in those times. So I hand built the one that was the prototype I brought up. And the first RAM I tested it with was um, 4K bytes of static memory. But then, you know, I realized the 4K dynamic RAMs came out that summer of 75. And I bought some AMI ones and I got it working with them. And when Steve Jobs finally saw it, he said, well, why didn't you use, the, did, would you consider using the Intel RAMs? I said, yeah, but it'd be too expensive. I could never afford Intel. And he says, what if I can get some for free? I said, oh, my God, they're better. They're TTL compatible. The voltage levels are lower. And, oh, my gosh. And, yes, you have to do two sets of two sets of addresses. But because the chips are smaller, they take up less space with fewer pins. And that still means less less complexity and more reliability. They're really the best chip. So he got the Intel chips, which the whole world was going to wind up going with. Got me some for free. So I put those on the Apple One. And... Um, and uh, everything about it was just yeah was was sort of sort of neat. I I would never do anything behind my company Hewlett Packard's back. So I offered it to them. They turned me down five times. Wow, five different times. And um, the first time was just to start a company to make this product. My division wouldn't do it. My calculator division. I wanted them to do it. I loved. They were my friends. I wanted to be important there, and they wouldn't do it. Okay, they turned me down. So we're going to go ahead and make PC boards for twenty bucks. And after we made our first PC boards, Steve got the deal from Paul Terrell for $50,000. Scary stuff. I went back to Hewlett Packard's legal department because I wasn't going to risk my job at Hewlett Packard. And went through the legal department. They circulated my description to every single Hewlett Packard division. And to tell you the truth, by this point in time, I was hoping that they would turn me down. And they did. I was really hoping we'd have our company Apple. Sure. You know, this was kind of cool where just the publicity was all positive because there was no big market. We were not competing with the big computer makers. So they kind of didn't care to say bad things about us or to anti market us. They just thought it wasn't going to go anywhere. And so we, um, so that was the second time they turned me down. And then they started a project in my lab at Hewlett Packard with a microprocessor. I'd already built the Apple One. And with a microprocessor, they had dynamic memory. I'd already worked with dynamic memory and come up with great great designs. They had a TV display built in, a little tiny black and white, you know, and I'd just done it for color and TSC. Um, They had a tape drive, you know, expensive commercial tape drive. I just used cassette tapes. They had five guys writing a basic. I'd just written the basic. And I said, please, my life is not calculators, it's computers. Please let me be on this Capricorn project. And they turned me down. They wouldn't let me shift to the Capricorn, the computer project. Well, thank heavens, we wouldn't have Apple today if that, yeah. if they had. <laughs> so, um, so coming from from that kind of background, and now what's how many years later? Thirty six. Thirty six years later, what's it like to come to a place like this where you still have all these fans and people who are dedicated to your the products of your imagination and your creativity? 
Yes. Um, my creativity kept me trying to keep up with the technology world. I loved gadgets. I loved hi-fis before Apple, plugging things together, owning little bits of electronics after Apple. And then we had some success. I could afford gadgets. And I kind of went with all the newer modern trends, trying to keep up and use the devices and be a part of that world. So I um, eventually, not right away with the Macintosh. It was quite a ways into the Macintosh before I um, even before I stopped using my Apple IIs, I used them for quite a long time into that actually and got a lot of use out of them. I'd have three Apple IIs using each one for different parts of my work, my engineering projects on little side companies. Um, but, but eventually I got separated from the real deep Apple II community, which was going to go on for a long time. Um, and I had gone, you know, I'd, I'd been back to Apple and the Apple II GS got started, you know, and I saw what it was. I look back now and I have a lot of almost regrets about the past. When I see how decently the Apple II GS was working the mouse type stuff, you know, and, and, and what the software could have allowed it to do, I almost think we missed the early boat in um, GUI computers, you know, by, by really trying to kill the Apple II. See, I was, and it was hard for me because I was in the Apple II division when I went back after getting my college degree, and we were not being ignored by Apple. You know, everybody on Apple had to have an Apple III on their desk. We were being killed. Deliberately, for exa I mean, for example, we just we just showed the disc two here, but everybody knows we went to the three and a half inch disc with stuff from Sony, and in the Apple II division, we were not allowed to buy a two sided disc because the Macintosh only had a one sided disc. They wouldn't let a better one be on the Apple II, oh. and so you know there was a lot of horrible things going on. We were just spoken of as being bozos in the Apple II division. But um, mm. you know what? I think of one thing. You know, I'm one person. I basically designed the whole computer myself. Yeah, there were important things like the disk drive. Randy had an important job, but I'll tell you, I told him what to do, <laughs> but kind of. But, um, but, you know, but I, I saw the whole disk picture in my head. But, you know, there were other parts of it, and there were a lot of other people that contributed over time, but pretty much it got created originally just by one person, and it was all the revenues and profits of the company for the first 10 years, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's respectful enough. And I don't need to do more things. I don't. I, I don't. I don't fight. I also am not political. I will never try to tell somebody. Well, I'm. I'm better than you at thinking out the ideas. We're going to go my way. So I would never run a company. And those business people, they would just chew me up, you know. So I never. I'm only at the bottom of the org chart, an engineer. That's my life. And. Um, but anyway, so the Apple II is kind of the, those fun days when I come here at K Fest and I see it. And I just know how much incredible fun I had doing those things and playing little code, trying to figure out things, especially, you know, copying the disk drives and all that. I used to, you know, study the, the hexadecimal in memory. But it's gotten really uh, quite advanced. Some really incredible people here that uh, just inspired me with their presentations. Great. Well, I think we're just about out of time. I think we are. Um, yeah, thank you very much for coming to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Oh, I do have one quick question. Is it? Yeah, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna block next year's time on my sure. calendar. I rarely, rarely do this for an event. It almost has to be a family wedding. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful that it worked out and you were able to be here. Do you still have an office somewhere at Apple, and do you still collect a paycheck? I do not have an office at Apple. And I do collect a paycheck, but it's very tiny, like a couple hundred bucks every two weeks comes in the mail or something. My accountant tells me some low number like that. And I just want to be the only person who's been on Apple's payroll computer mm -hmm. every day since the start. I was never off. Even when I had my plane crash, even when I went back to college, I was getting the small paychecks because I didn't want to be off the computer. Sure. Wow. So, yeah. So I don't know if they ever come up with a... Uh, um, oh, what do you call it when you have a, a pension plan? If they ever come up with a pension plan, maybe I'll rank high. Sure. Well, thank you very much for <laughs> yes. your time. We appreciate it. Thanks. It was great to meet you. And the people here, too. You know what? Meeting all these people that really love studying the little tiny details of a, of a computer the way I did back then. I'm kind of past that now because I'm just public figure and, and all this. And, and it's the thing that I love to do the most. You sometimes get detracted from if you're open to the world. So, but I'm meeting these people and seeing what they do and they, they love and live and the fun they have and oh, just wishing it was me there. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to seeing you next year, Steve. Okay.